Now, what does that mean for us here in P.E. Carlton? Well, it's quite significant. It means every single dollar that we spend servicing the debt and the deficit is a dollar that is taken away from frontline health care, as well as classroom teaching. It means that our colleges, universities, and trades, it means our police and our fire services receive less money combined than the total deficit financing program in our province. So we know here in Ontario we have some tough decisions we have to make. But it's up to us to make them together, not unilaterally by Queen's Park, by Dalton McGinty, who is rushing through some pretty severe changes as a result of last week's budget. We know, for example, that the changes that are going to happen in our health care system could prevent preventative medicine from occurring. We know we've heard from some doctors that they're considering leaving our jurisdiction for other places. And we know that the whole process has engaged our physicians and our community doctors in a way that has made them become lobbyists rather than health care providers. And I know from my constituents, whether they're a patient or that they're a physician, they will prefer that we let our doctors do what they do best, which is treat people. I'm here this evening with a number of uh, doctors from a various uh, set of disciplines. I'm here this evening with a number of uh, doctors from a various uh, set of disciplines. We've got palliative care doctors here tonight, and pediatricians, people who are here at the beginning of the life and the end of the life. There are people who work very hard, who went to school, who we asked to be attracted to our community and who we want to retain. But the measures that have occurred in the last few months, particularly last week, have forced many of these doctors to reconsider how they're going to treat their patients, many of you in this room, and your families. When I was first elected in 2006, my main goal and the reason to run was to attract more family physicians to our community. At the time, we were the richest province in Canada, and we were living in the richest city in that country. Today that's changed. We're have not province. Our debt and our deficit are larger than all the other provinces combined. And we've got one of the highest taxation levels in all of North America. So we have to do better. And we have to make sure that we're protecting people that are in this room and in our community hospitals. So that's why, together with the Ontario Medical Association, I felt it was necessary to host a town hall session so that you would not only know what was going to happen as a result of last week's budget, but you could hear straight from our community doctors what that will mean the next time you go to the doctor. This evening, we will have a Dr. Robert Swenson, who is the Chief of Psychiatry of the Ottawa Hospital in Ottawa talk to us tonight. He's trained in internal medicine and psychiatry. And he's done this all around the world, not just in our great province. We also have Dr. Marilee Fullerton, who has had 25 years of family practice here in our city. And she deals with change in demographics, economics, and she does this through a very popular blog and on Twitter. Both of these individuals will recount to you their stories of being physicians and dealing with the budgetary crisis and how they expect to move forward. These doctors here today understand the financial restraints that we have in Ontario. In fact, that's why they offered to join MPPs in a two-year legislative wage freeze. But what has happened to these folks in the last six months is a, a vitriolic attack by the McGinty Liberals trying to vilify the very people that we trust to make us feel better. They'll each uh, provide some opening remarks, and then we will call upon a few other physicians. Dr. Judy, Judy Van Stralen, who is a pediatrician. Dr. Hacker, who is a community palliative care physician. And Dr. Jick, who is also a community palliative care physician. We'd like to sort of give you uh, the who, what, where, when, and how of what's happening. So the what is a billion dollars, not a billion dollars, a billion dollars in cuts from the Ontario Health Insurance Plan. 
that will be for the next several years. That is something that will not only affect physicians, and I think there are a lot of people that are misinformed. They think that this is for greedy doctors who earn too much, who are you know driving fast cars and, and are not deserving of the time they put in or the work that they do. This is about doctors that have helped reduce wait times. We have worked very hard for the last few years providing better access, investing in our clinics, investing in capacity to provide access and recovering from the disastrous MVP solution which was just to cut medical school positions and nursing positions. It's taken us this long to recover. We have new medical um, students, residents that are graduating but they can't get jobs. We have orthopedic surgeons who are graduating ready to work and help the thousands of people that are waiting for new hips and new knees, but they can't find a job. Can you imagine? So one of them I know is moving to Australia. He's just finished writing his exams and he's leaving. Uh, all of his class, he does not know of a single orthopedic resident of his class who is staying. I get notices in my office on a regular basis from orthopedic surgeons, cardiologists who are leaving. They're leaving. This is not bluff. This is not made up. This is not a political strategy to make you feel sorry for doctors. These, this will impact you. And our job as physicians is to work with patients. That's why we went into this profession. And so what's happening is we're training doctors who are not able to work. We're training them at huge expense. We're losing our valuable human resources. Um, so we have to find another way to do this. We have ORs that are running <coughs> unused despite wait times, despite hundreds of millions of dollars spent measuring and monitoring <coughs> people on wait lists. We have the Conference Board of Canada has listed 200 agencies that simply do research, monitor, measure, and we're not providing the frontline care. Instead, we have people on wait lists that we're measuring and monitoring. So you will see longer wait lists. You will see longer wait times to access your specialists. You will potentially not be able to access your family doctor as easily, because as doctors are constrained by costs, we have to lay off staff. We have to downsize our offices. Some of us will join a bigger group and maybe have to reduce our hours. So this is a situation where the financial impact of these budgetary cuts on doctors will impact a patient. And I don't think that that's honest. I think when the government of the province of Ontario portrays this to be about doctors wanting more money, I call that dishonest, and I call it political posturing. They want you to believe that it's the doctors who are the bad guys. And I'm here to tell you that I'm on your side. I am not a bad guy. So if we have limited, more limited access to doctors, more <coughs> limited access to diagnostics such as radiology, we're being told now by government when we should order x-rays. So your doctor is no longer able to order certain x-rays or certain tests because a government bureaucrat in probably one of these 200 agencies who gets paid for not delivering care is telling the doctors, who don't, they don't even have the patient in front of them, but they're telling doctors what they should be doing. And so I asked, who went to medical school? Uh, who's caring for the patient? Who has the patient right in front of them? I do. It's not the bureaucrat. I have the patient there. I'm the one who cares. I'm the one who puts my arms around them and gives them the bad news if there's bad news to be delivered. So reduced access, reduced access to radiology, reduced access to ophthalmology, people that... I see the government doing exactly that, not talking to, to us who were on the front lines and saying, well, geez, we've got a real challenge here. Uh, what are we going to do? In fact, they're just saying, well, it's the doctor's fault. And that really concerns me. I don't think that the world economic situation is necessarily uh, uh, 
anybody's fault. But if you don't collaborate, if you don't work with your experts, and, and uh, if government doesn't approach its physicians, then I think we're going to be in big trouble. And the, the top healthcare systems in the world, the top hospitals, work in collaboration with physicians. And unfortunately, in, the, in this budgetary go around, I think the government's so uh, afraid that they're making very rash decisions. I'll give you an example. They made a decision and put it into a regulation that uh, doctors couldn't perform tests themselves that they, they deem medically necessary. They have to send, send a recommendation back to the family doc who then sends it to another doctor to do uh, something like an ultrasound. And if a doctor does do the tests themselves, they're paid at half the rate. Well then, when they really examine what happened, a specialist like an obstetrician wouldn't be able to do an ultrasound and wouldn't be able to use a machine that they have in their office to check the health of the baby. And if they did that, they'd be paid half the rate that they were being paid. Well, the obstetrician couldn't, couldn't afford to, to run that service. And the government realized, oh, how will that affect patients? They put the regulation and now they can't implement it because they didn't think it through. Did they ask the physicians? No. In fact, now they've been, just learned in the last day they put a halt on, uh, on that. So I really think that the OMA, the physicians of Ontario, have said to the government, we're willing to, to negotiate on fees. We realize you've got a problem. We'll be your partners. Uh, we will offer no uh, fee raises, so we're, we're not going to get raises. We'll offer to find savings, and we guarantee we'll, we'll find $250 million over the next two or three years, and maybe we can find more, but we've got to do it collaboratively. The government said, no way, We're not interested, and it's all your fault. And I don't believe that's the way to run a health care system. And there have been big mistakes on e-health, on our, 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 uh, our uh, medical transportation system, uh, and uh, Agent Orange or whatever they call it. Um, but again, I think this, this government has to work collaboratively, just like we do at the Ottawa Hospital.